Hello everyone, and greetings from beautiful warm Los Angeles. My name is Ji Xu. I'm a postdoc in Dr. Bob Cox's lab in the physiology department at UCLA. In the next few minutes, I want to tell you about our recently published JGP paper entitled Imaging P2X4 Receptor Subcellular Distribution, Trafficking, and Regulation Using P2X4 Fluorine. To start, let me give you a brief introduction. P2X receptors are ATP-gated chylan channels that exist on the plasma membrane and within intracellular organelles such as lysosomes. In the last decade, we have learned a lot about the biophysics of P2X receptors, but our understanding of how they traffic to and from the plasma membrane has been limited. A major limitation has been the lack of methods to image P2X receptor trafficking. We set out to develop a method to image P2X4 receptor trafficking. To this end, we engineered P2X4 receptors to carry fluorine tags within the extracellular domain. Fluorine is a pH-sensitive green fluorescent protein, with its fluorescence quenched at acidic pH, but brightly fluorescent at a neutral pH. When P2X4 receptors are secreted onto the plasma membrane, their pH environment changes from being acidic to being neutral. Thus, the fluorescence intensity from attached fluorine will dramatically increase when P2X4 receptors are secreted onto plasma membrane. Our hope was that we could image P2X4 receptor trafficking by tracking the fluorescence intensity of attached fluorine. Because the P2X receptor subunit has intracellular N and C termini, we have to design a P2X construct to carry fluorine in an extracellular loop. There was no obvious way to predict a inoculocyte to insert fluorine within the P2X4 receptor extracellular domain. However, the recent availability of P2X4 crystal structure provided a unique opportunity to design P2X4 receptors carrying extracellular located fluorines. Using sequence analysis guided by P2X4 crystal structure, we identified regions within the extracellular domain that correspond to flexible loops or unfolded regions. Finally, we compare the amino acid sequences of these regions to those representing non-conserved areas based on sequence analysis. The combination of these approaches suggested nine sites for fluorine insertions shown here. We then transfect these fluorine tagged receptors into hex cells and used electrophysiology to screen them. Among them, P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 is the most similar to Y-type receptors with the same current amplitude and IV relationship. We then further characterize the properties of P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 receptors. First, ATP evoked concentration dependent inward currents were almost identical in hex cells expressing Y type and P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 receptors. Thus, the concentration effect curves for Y type P2X4 and P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 overlapped with similar EC50 at around 6 micromole and similar hair slopes of around 2, consistent with past work on mouse P2X4 receptors. Their peak current amplitudes are also similar. To characterize its distribution, we explored co-localization between P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 with plasma membrane marker PMM cherry, ER marker DCR2ER, and lysosome marker lamp one rfp our data indicate that P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 was expressed predominantly on plasma membrane and within lysosomal compartments. In contrast, we found little colocalization between P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 and ER. Next, we explored the pH dependence of fluorine to quantify the fractions of P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 receptors in different compartments of hex cells. Since protons do not cross the plasma membrane, we could use pH 5.4 solution to measure a surface fraction. Ammonia is membrane permeable and will cross the membrane and iconize the acidic vesicles. Thus, applications of ammonium chloride were used to reveal the total receptor fraction. After completing the experiments and by quantifying the fluorescence intensity in different solutions, the fractions could be calculated by the equations shown in panel B. From these measurements, we found that there were 40% receptors on membrane, 50% in acidic compartments, and a further 10% residing in other compartments. Next, we set out to evaluate the utility of P2X4 fluorine 1 to 3 
in cultural hippocampal neurons and the CAB4 microglial cell In so doing, we analyzed the fluorescent signal from the somatic regions as well as in regions from processes. There were no differences in the relative proportions of cell surface and intracellular P2X4 following 1 to 3 receptors in the somata or processes of neurons. However, for say before microglial cells, the cell surface fraction was significantly larger in the processes as compared to somata. Moreover, a quadruple P2X4 mutant which lacks endocytic and elastosomal targeting significantly increased the fraction of receptors on the cell surface for CAB4 microglial processes and somata. This data support the findings that the distribution of P2X4 following 1 to 3 receptors within cellular compartments is determined by specific amino acid residues in the cytosolic N and C termini. Because P2X4 following 1 to 3 receptors allow us to measure cell surface fractions and functional responses at the same time, we reason that we could use this tool to settle our argument about how avamectin potentiates P2X4 receptors. Past work shows that the application of micromolar amounts of avamectin to cells expressing P2X4 receptors dramatically potentiates and prolongs ATP evolved currents. When this property was discovered, it was suggested that avamectin was an elasteric regulator of P2X4 receptors. However, another study employing biochemical methods suggests that avamectin potentiated P2X4 receptor responses by reducing endocytosis, which in turn increased the pool of functional P2X4 receptors on the plasma membrane. But before testing this two series using P2X4 fluorine 1, 2, 3, we first tested if the P2X4 fluorine receptors was potentiated by avamectin. Our results show that avamectin potentiated ATP evolved currents mediated by Y-type P2X4 and P2X4 fluorine 1, 2, 3 receptors equally. Therefore, P2X4 fluorine 1, 2, 3 can be used to study how avamectin increases ATP evolved currents. Our prediction is that if avamectin increases the surface fraction of P2X4 receptors, then the fluorescent signal quenched by acidic buffer will increase after avamectin application. We test this possibility by applying pH 5.4 buffers to single HEC293 cells and say before microglial expressing P2X4 flowing 1 to 3 before and during applications of 3 micromolar avamectin. We found that avamectin did not significantly change the surface fraction of receptors. We then performed whole cell recording on the same cells to determine if a subsequent application of avamectin potentiated the ATP evolved currents. For both hex cells and say before microglial, avamectin did significantly potentiate and prolong the ATP evolved currents. Taken together, our experiments support the view that avamectin acts elasterically to potentiate ATP evoked responses mediated by P2X4 receptors. We found no evidence that avamectin increased the cell surface pool of P2X4 receptors. Okay, to summarize then, our data show that P2X4 flowing 1 to 3 is a wonderful and precise way to study P2X4 trafficking with light. In future work, P2X4 flowing 1 to 3 reporter could potentially be used to image upregulation of P2X4 receptors in microglial cells and other cells during pathological processes. It can be used to image lambda body exocytosis from lung alveolar type 2 cells. It can be used to develop assays for screening small compound libraries for drug like molecules to target P2X4 receptor upregulation. It can also be used to study the trafficking of two different ion channel populations simultaneously by combining it with subunits that carry pH sensitive tomato proteins. Our work was supported by the NIH and our constructs are available from edging. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Goodbye.